that states are going to feel the blunt of that, uh, those, those cuts. Um, and, but I want to show you what that looks like. Uh, if we were to take a massive cut in federal funding, we would certainly be downgraded in terms of our bond rating. It means that it costs more to borrow money, to buy money, to do business. Uh, we would uh, lose an awful lot of workers. We've got the, the largest concentration of federal employees in the country right here in Maryland. Uh, our tax base would plummet. Um, and the need for safety net services, which we've come uh, to just expect in, in, in Maryland, uh, would become much, much, much greater at a time when the, the money would be going the other way. So you have the needs going this way and the money going this way. It's really the economic perfect storm. Pension and retiree health care is another huge issue in terms of what rating agencies look at in terms of the fiscal health of the state. We, um, we're about 64, 65% funded in our pension fund, for example. Uh, we owe about $34 billion in unfunded pensions. What that means in English is if everyone, the 300,000 uh, retirees were to retire tomorrow, six out of 10 of them would get paid. That's due in part uh, because of a decision that was made in 2001 when we thought we had a budget problem. Uh, and a funding formula replaced in the actuarial formula that every other state uses. And we created this cryptic formula called the corridor formula. And it had the overall cumulative effect of, um, uh, of uh, defunding our pension system. And that's how we got to 65%. A healthy number for rating agencies, about 80%. A good number is 90%. Uh, there are a lot of ways out of that problem. Uh, I had a bill in last year, was unsuccessful, House Bill 10, the Pension uh, Sustainability and Salvancy Trust Fund when I was in the House of Delegates. It would have eliminated that, uh, that shortfall by implementing two revenue streams, the millionaire tax bracket and combined reporting. And creating a uh, trust fund, a lockbox trust fund, in SRPS, the State Retirement and Pension System, and to be able to start paying our way out of this and also repeal that cryptic corridor formula with an actuarial formula. That bill was unsuccessful, uh, uh, but you know there were many other alternatives out there, some good, some, some not good. But this is one issue that, that folks should be focused on right now because it eclipses any other budget item that's, that you're going to hear about, whether it's disabilities funding or pay cleanup or, or health care or anything else. This pension uh, liability is enormous. Uh, and it has the capacity, as it has in many other states, to render that state insolvent. Other options, reduce benefits, increase cost sharing, which we, both of which we began to do last year, that $900 million. We had to do something. There were very tough decisions. Um, some of that took place. And pension shift to the counties. So right now, the state government pays the cost of retiree pensions for, for, for folks like Gino's um, uh, employees and, and teachers uh, on the local level. Uh, for teachers in particular, you know, we're proud uh, of, our, of our education, we get the best schools in the nation. It didn't happen by accident. It happened because we hire the, the brightest and the best. We you know, seek out those folks and we pay them a decent wage. Uh, we're able to do that because it's one of the only funding formulas in the, in the, in the state that's fair to Montgomery County because we've got the best teachers, right? So the state pays the, the pension costs if the state were to deleverage, if they were to stop paying the pension costs on the state level and dump it on the backs of Montgomery County, it would cause uh, a ripple effect through the county. First thing that would go is social services. Second thing that would go were non uh, other public employees who don't have the same level of benefit. Um, so uh, that's about $70 million. It's a very real possibility, and uh, it's a 
political issue that's been before us in Annapolis certainly for the last couple of years in, in a big way, and it's coming down the pipeline. I don't know how that thing ended up there. Okay. Another big issue is our transportation trust fund, right? Goods and services, moving people, things around the state, light rail, purple line, red line, bus rapid transit. Uh, our transportation trust fund is not in locked lockbox. And as I mentioned a few moments ago, in order to balance the budget to avert some very bad things, we have, the governor has, we have uh, diverted large amounts of money or borrowed large amounts of money from the Transportation Trust Fund to pay for other things. That money is being paid back, by the way. Um, there is some rumors out there that it's never gotten paid back. It is being paid back. Uh, but we need, uh, bottom line is we need a, a dedicated revenue stream to pay for uh, our infrastructure projects, our transportation projects, like the Purple Line. Uh, and uh, by the way, in terms of highway user revenues, the money that counties get from the state to fill potholes, uh, that's all but gone in Montgomery County. That was one of the first things on the chopping block a few years ago when we knew we had a real big problem. So we need a way to fund our transportation needs. Last year there were two gas tax bills. None of them are that unique. I mean, gas tax idea has been around for a million years. Uh, Rob Garagiola, Senate Majority Leader, had a 10 cent gas tax and a constitutional amendment that would create a lockbox in the Transportation Trust Fund. It was largely supported by Chambers of Commerce, but also by many uh, 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 smart growth groups and, and uh, transportation advocates. I had a bill my first year in the Senate. It would have been a 3 cent, 3% 3 gas tax. It would have treated uh, vending machines like slot machines, like, uh, you know, gas pumps like vending machines, uh, and it would have taken a quarter of the revenue generated in the big three, Montgomery, Prince George's, and Baltimore City, which have large light rail needs, the red line and the purple line. A quarter of the revenue generated in those three jurisdictions would go to a special new fund called a mass transit account in the Transportation Trust Fund to begin accruing money in that account to build these, these, uh, these, these projects. By the way, the Senate President uh, is, a, is a, one of a, the biggest supporters of gas tax. Uh, tough time to do it because the price of gas is like nine dollars a gallon, right? Uh, but uh, it's something that, that we need to keep moving forward with if we want to be able to, to, to realize light rail and bus rapid transit. The big one, Medicaid, seven billion dollar budget. There's, as I mentioned before, there's four of us on the HHS subcommittee. Um, that oversee that budget. The needs are extraordinary. There, is more, there are more and more people tying into Medicaid. Uh, there are income uh, eligibility concerns, a lot of issues relating to uh, the federal health care reforms. We are at this, at this moment unsure what Medicaid is going to look like in 2014 and 2015 when federal health care reform uh, kicks in. I can tell you that Vermont uh, implemented a single payer bill recently. <laughs> Using very, very new, innovative ways of, of, of pooling healthcare dollars and Medicaid dollars. Uh, they haven't gone bankrupt yet, uh, so we're going to be watching Vermont um, very, very closely over the next few years. So, this is the chart of Medicaid. Uh, enrollments, you can see it's gone through the roof since 2001 uh, in, in Maryland. And not every state is as generous and as uh, intelligent about uh, their understanding of the need for Medicaid dollars, which is the safety net of all safety net programs uh, in state government. Uh, no easy solution, but it comes down to this. Medicaid is a dollar for dollar match with the federal government. If what happens in, in, in the federal government results in a massive cut to Medicaid, um, it will require the state of Maryland uh, to, to follow suit because we lose our match. Bottom line, no matter how you look at it, without new revenue, tough changes must be made. 
how to get the hell out of this mess. <laughs> and there's a lot of ways to do it, folks, so I'm just going to throw a few out, a few out there. The, the one that's being talked about the most in, in Annapolis is cuts. But there's not much fat left on the bone. We've cut $6 billion in the last five years. The easy cuts have already been done. The major pots of money that are being eyeballed right now are education, Medicaid, pension shift, and my favorite, wholesale reevaluation of wealth formulas, which are really, I think, overdue. Uh, what would these cuts look like? Again, these are being eyeballed right now. This is state government. Look at these numbers. If 10% of that went away, you know, we'd be in big trouble. Number two, revenue, taxes. Here's where I wanted to get to. Millionaire tax brings in, so our top, top tax rate is five and a half. If you were to raise it to 6.25 for folks, for, for money, made over a million dollars. So anything over a million dollars would be taxed at a higher rate. You bring about 70 million. Yeah. 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 Sales tax, uh, right now it's at six. If you raise it to seven, you'd bring in around 700 million. Sales tax on services is more complicated because we still don't know who can take the hit. And there are services, some services and some industries that like the startup biotech, I have one minute left, uh, who we don't want to do anything to hurt. Um, corporate income tax rate, raising that to 925, you get Motor fuel tax, you get about 30 million for every one cent. Combined reporting, you get about 150 million. If you implement it orally, you would fix the budget. You're done. The problem is, it's unlikely that you have the votes in Annapolis to pass one of these. Uh, so thinking out of the box, you can reduce the deficit, provide greatly needed jobs right now, uh, by providing some kind of a re renewed deal. Remember the, the new deal? How about a renewed deal? A massive infrastructure effort on the state level to build roads, bridges, police stations, uh, using bonding authority, public-private partnership, uh, very, very innovative funding schemes. I was just in Nova Scotia talking about how they're doing this. Uh, it works, and that will put thousands and thousands of people to work and uh, create, you know, hundreds of millions, if not billions of dollars in goods and services. Uh, I'd also like to add that we need a massive effort to transition Maryland's millions of traditional agricultural acres to sustainable, healthy, and much more lucrative organic. We can do that. And last but not least, and I just got to make a little plug for it, we, all of this could go away by passing this bill. Companies out of the health, out of the health insurance business, and that's the property management business that they belong. So, how can we help? Change the world. This is my favorite quote of all time. Organize, march, write letters, make calls, we're not. Work like our future depends on it because it does. Thank you, guys.